and welcome. In this lecture, we're going to be talking a little bit about nursing research and evidence-based practice. And the main goal here is to just do an overview and sort of distinguish those two elements from another and also show how they intersect. So we all know that there's ways in which the healthcare system could be improved. But if we're talking about improvement, um, how are we going to be confident that the changes that we make actually will benefit people? Well, the only way to do that reliably is to base it off of good information. Um, and that information is produced through nursing research. Now, nursing research itself is very useful for providing information, but it doesn't do much good unless we do something with that information. And that's the evidence-based practice part of things, where we actually take that information and change practice based upon it. So uh, in, a, in a basic sort of way, when we're thinking about research and evidence-based practice, you could think about in the clinic confronting a clinical question, something that comes up for you uh, in terms of how to care for patients, uh, in terms of different procedures, in terms of um, you know structural systems, communication strategies, you know any of a number of things that you could face uh, in that context. So you have a clinical question, and as you confront it, you then can ask the question of, is there information out there? Is there research which can, which can give me an answer to how we should change practice to address this problem, right? So if there's enough evidence to change practice, um, if, if so you say yes, then that would be a situation where you could engage in the evidence-based practice process and create new guidelines or procedures based upon the research that already shows that there's a better way of doing things. Now, on the other hand, you might find out that there actually isn't enough information, or maybe the information sort of balances and it's a little hard to tell which direction it goes. So that might be a situation where you would consider doing a research study because we actually need to gather more information or improved information to actually answer what the right choice is in terms of making uh, clinical decisions. So those are kind of the two different pathways that you might think about, which might lead you down the research direction or the evidence-based practice direction. So let's start talking about nursing research uh, first. So nursing research is a systematic inquiry. So it uses discipline methods uh, to answer and solve problems, right? Now, the key component to this definition here is a systematic inquiry, all right? Uh, having a system that uh, allows us to think carefully about a problem uh, and allows that work to be replicated by others, allows it to be understood by others, um, and allows us to build knowledge about a certain area is really important. And that's uh, using specific processes, using specific methods is really very important to that. And we'll learn a lot more about how to do that and how to design these studies to actually create um, information that we uh, trust as we use it to, to make decisions. Now, uh, what, what that research could look like could vary. It could be looking at different types of phenomena in nursing, different types of situations or uh, experience of people who are uh, in the healthcare system or engaging in nursing in some way. Uh, it can also be more looking at different types of relationships between different factors related to health that we are trying to understand and connect. But the goal here, generally speaking, is to generate new knowledge that can help uh, improve patient health outcomes or help improve the healthcare system in some way. Um, and, you know, that, that is the goal of, of research in this context, uh, giving us new information that can help guide our action. Now, one thing about this that is notable about this definition of research is that the focus here is not necessarily on taking care of the patient, right? Um, so when we're acting as clinicians, our main focus is um, making sure that the patient is uh, uh, supported and having the best outcome. Now, research uh, um, often, you know, should, if it's ethical, be caring a lot about the ben the well-being of a, of of a, someone enrolled in the study. That being said, there's some cases where um, it's seen as being acceptable to do certain studies where patients may actually be harmed. An example of this might be a situation where, you know, you have 
people who are ill who you're doing spinal taps with and you need to do a control group and you recruit people to be your control group um, and you do spinal taps with them and you know that that hurts that's not a pleasant procedure right um, but in order to answer that research question there may be some level of harm that's seen as being appropriate so there's certain there's certain circumstances in which uh, research the goal of research is not necessarily is, is focused on answering a new question, not necessarily supporting individual or not necessarily um, improving the health of all individuals in that study. Now, this is a really interesting distinction uh, and it has a lot of ethical issues with it, which we can talk about at a later point. But I, I just wanna bring that up to sort of distinguish that from clinical practice. So when we're thinking about the steps in nursing research, um, in sort of a crude general way, you know, you think about uh, encountering a problem, uh, some issue that you're concerned about, you develop a problem statement, figure out what your research question is, narrow it down to figure out what you're, what you're going to be asking. Uh, you might develop hypotheses about what um, the relationships are of different variables or different factors that you're looking at, right? Um, and based upon that, you might start looking at the literature um, uh, uh, and uh, getting more information. And the review of the literature actually might inform those questions and those hypotheses as well. Right. So that literature uh, can be very useful for seeing what already has been done in this area. Uh, once you have a good idea of what you're doing in a certain area, you might develop a study, so figure out what methods, what approach you'd use to get gathering information and how you would measure the things that you're trying to study or, or gather information about them. And uh, once you have that set up, you would go ahead and collect uh, the, the data about the issue that you're looking at. Uh, and then start, uh, once you have that data, you can then analyze it to start trying to figure out what your, um, what your findings or outcomes are, right? Uh, then uh, the hope is is that you'll take that information and use it, right? So you'll disseminate, you'll take that information, you'll publish a paper, you'll present about it, you'll share that information so that people can use what you found to actually improve clinical practice. Now that was sort of a basic um, cycle that you could think about in terms of nursing research. But when we think about the scientific process, it's actually much more complicated than, than that. And um, that's, it's more complicated in very interesting ways. Um, this is a chart that's been put together that sort of talks about the complexity of research in a, um, in a more layered way uh, and sort of the feedback cycles that are involved in this. So here we're looking at um, uh, four different components. You know, the testing ideas, which is at the center, that's sort of the research process I just talked about in the previous slide of sort of thinking about and developing research and, and interpreting what that data would mean. Um, but you also have the elements to research that involve the exploration and discovery. So what different factors motivate you to do research? What things inspire you? What cause that, cre that curiosity that um, make you want to do this? And what types of things inspire, uh, do you pull together to uh, give you that, that interest, um, make you want to explore, uh, help you uh, uh, ask questions, right? Um, these are things that we use uh, in our sort of everyday experience in the clinic to observe things that are going on that helps motivate us to pursue research where you actually test those ideas. Now, when we're talking about testing ideas, um, it's not just the research itself. It's not just those individual papers. It's also the way in which those that research that's produced interacts with a larger community where um, researchers, your colleagues, um, other other uh, clinicians read those papers and integrate it in a larger way in terms of both the publication process where you get feedback on, on that work um, and also the ways in which it connects in with theories and other factors to sort of think about in a community process what that overall information means. And so what the findings of study mean are sort of interactive with this larger scientific community. There's also ways in which the research itself interacts with the outcomes or the benefits or the results of the study. So we wouldn't think about research uh, typically as being entirely independent of the larger world where it actually makes a difference, right? So there's many ways in which research can inform policy or 
um, help us build a set of knowledge or help us develop new technologies that can be helpful for improving health, right? And all these different factors, you know, when we think about those four different elements, interact with one another to sort of create the complex web of the research process and what it means to society as a whole. So the significance of research is really quite significant, quite important. Um, you know, there's ways in which what it allows us to do is test whether or not our general beliefs about the world are actually true, right? Um, there's a lot of things that we take for granted. We just we just assume that they're true just because that's what always people have always done. That's what we just seems to be logical, right? Um, but sometimes it's not until you do the research that you actually find out things about the world that you didn't expect that, um, that seem strange. And those are the things that lead us in new directions and help us advance our knowledge. Like, um, you know, weird things like you would expect that, uh, getting up to use a toilet would use more oxygen than using a bedpan, but they did the research and no, it's the opposite, right? Well, why is that? I, I mean, I, I don't know the answer to that, but, but what that, says is that the thing that we intuitively would imagine isn't always true, right? And this allows us to think about things in new ways. And, you know, by doing this, by continuing to gain knowledge and, and advance our knowledge, it helps us to be more effective, right? It helps us to understand what we do in nursing that actually can be improved uh, and benefit people's health. Um, the other thing that research can do that's really helpful is really gaining more insight about people's experiences with the healthcare process, with um, being experiencing a health condition, um, and getting some deep knowledge of what nursing means uh, to individuals in society uh, can be a very val valuable thing for guiding what we do and how we interact with patients. Um, there's other elements. Research can be really helpful for thinking about complex relationships. A lot of complex relationships are very hard to figure out intuitively, right? Um, sometimes you actually need sort of systematic approaches to actually be able to reveal what those relationships are and how they connect. Um, especially when you're talking about things like connections between individuals and the environment, which are, you know, these are very complex connections, right? So having those systematic approaches, those distinct methodologies are crucial for identifying those subtleties. And generally, you know, it's really useful for these sort of practical questions about how can you improve nursing education or education in general? How can you improve practice and how can you create administrative methods to actually improve access or benefit individuals, right? So there's, there's a lot of opportunities there. Um, you know, there's many examples out there of different types of nursing research, um, you know, everything from, you know, working on chronic illness to management of symptoms, palliative care at end of life, looking at health disparities. There's a whole range of different types of work that are that are being done in nursing research uh, that are incredibly valuable for advancing our understanding in these areas. Um, I want to do a little bit of discussion around a few different concepts in research, just so you're familiar about, of, with them, because we're going to be talking about them as we go forward. Um, so uh, this is just to start you off. So um, very often, uh, research is often divided into two different categories, qualitative and quantitative research. There's also mixed methods, which combines those two. But um, I just wanted to describe that so that you understand what's being referred to there. So qualitative research is research that's really focusing in on how people experience uh, a health condition, how they feel about it. And usually this uses um, as its source data, people's words. So how people talk about it, interviews or conversations. So the goal here is to get an in-depth understanding of people's experiences and feelings, right? Quantitative research tends to be more focused in on quantitative elements. So numbers are uh, counting in some way or form. So how many and how much, for example. So this is very often what we think of in terms of survey research or you know, biological research that's looking at, say, uh, testing drugs or other things like that. These are using um, fairly uh, complex 
statistical methods uh, or and data collection to get quantitative data that can give us insight into some of those relationships that exist out there. Um, we often also see terms like basic and applied research. So basic research is really research that's more oriented towards knowledge for knowledge's sake. And another way of thinking about this really is that this is building our basic knowledge in a specific area where the goal is not necessarily to answer a specific practical problem, it's more to help us understand what's going on generally in sort of a, a complex biological process or something like that. And um, this may down the road eventually lead to advances in technology or improvements in healthcare of various sorts uh, or procedures. But in that basic research, very often the primary goal is to build key elements to knowledge. Applied research is research which is really looking at very specific practical questions in healthcare practice. And the goal there is to really guide us towards practical things that we can do to improve patients' health, right? So most nursing research is applied research, but not all of it. So, um, but you'll see those terms used with some, with some frequency. Now, when we talk about application uh, of, res of research and information, um, what we find is that uh, there's a question of how we take that basic information or early research and translate it into healthcare practice. And that process of translating that basic information or information as we gather it uh, about new uh, potentially promising health technologies or approaches is called translational research. So it's called the, uh, it's referred to as the building of an evidence base for integration of applications into practice and demonstrating health pack, uh, impact at a population level. So how do we move from that basic information to actually um, having practical applications? Now, one of the things that we found is that translation of research is very slow. Um, unfortunately, it takes about 17 years for just 14% of scientific discoveries that are really promising to actually lead to benefits in the patient care. That's a really long time, 17 years. So the aspirin example there is um, low dose aspirin in cardiovascular disease. It took about 20 years between finding that and actually having it be used in practice, right? Um, now, of course, you need some time to test things out to actually believe that those relations exist, exist and make sure that there's no negative consequences of this, right? But um, 17 years is a really long time. If you think about, you know, low-dose aspirin, if, if that had been 10 years instead of 20 years, how many lives would have been saved by that, by starting to use that earlier? Probably a whole lot, right? Thousands and thousands of lives. So um, there's a real benefit to us doing a better job at translational research. Here's just another study where they looked at 100, 101 promising technologies um, that over 20 years only lent 27 uh, published randomized trials, 19 of which were, have positive impact, which is really quite encouraging. Uh, and uh, five were licensed for clinical use and only one was put into practice, right? So we're having a problem in healthcare of actually taking those findings that are really promising and actually producing something beneficial from them. Now, one of the reasons that this is a problem is a lot of the folks who are really skilled at doing research that actually can benefit patients um, are clinicians. And there's a real need to have more clinicians who can take leadership in translating this information into actual practical um, products that will actually uh, support uh, patients and, and uh, overall health and well-being. So that's something that we know is a problem in, in, our, in our research process, something that we're really hoping that we can uh, encourage more nurses and clinicians to take on some of that translational work. Now, another thing I just wanted to mention here is that, you know, when we think about where research comes from and where it's done, there's um, a few different sources that commonly come up in terms of where this, this work is done. So some research is done uh, in academic settings. So uh, in, in uh, higher education, you have a lot of faculty who do a lot of research uh, to try and understand how to improve healthcare systems. 
a lot of evaluation programs, developing new technologies or uh, educational designs and things like that. But there's also a ton of research that's being done in healthcare settings, which is uh, something that a lot of nurses are very involved in, uh, again, both, both in healthcare settings and in academic settings. Uh, but there's tremendous opportunities there. And uh, in these healthcare settings, there's opportunities to work with patients, to work with um, uh, different units that are trying out different types of processes to actually improve health. So that's very often where we see nursing research being done. Now, historically speaking, uh, there's a long history of nursing research going back to Florence Nightingale and the, the polar diagrams in 1858. Um, but there's a way in which um, nursing research has um, not been given its due. Um, and, um, you know, it took until the 1950s to have a nursing research journal. And that's relatively research, recent when we talk about clinical research, right? Um, uh, you know, the IOM in 1980 really pushing for nursing research as being really important to support and encourage. Um, the National Institute of Nursing only being found in 1993, right? So um, there's a way in which the, there hasn't been as much funding and attention given to nursing research historically as there really should have been. And, um, you know, there's a lot of reasons for this, um, you know, partially structural, a lot of it relating to the history of nursing and a lot of sexism that has existed in a lot of research circles. Um, but there's a real push right now to encourage more nurses to be doing this work because you have such crucial perspective and skills that can really benefit uh, translational research that can make such a huge impact. So there's a lot of future directions that we're really hoping that uh, nursing research will push towards. Again, pushing for more evidence-based uh, promotion of evidence-based practice through through research uh, and using research, uh, creating more in, uh, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary collaborations that connect nurses with other uh, other professionals and building those really rich interdisciplinary approaches to thinking about research. Um, more work that um, builds our understanding of how to improve health outcomes for individuals. Um, looking at different types of strategies for for doing research, uh, integrating new methods, uh, new approaches, doing more dissemination of research, right? So um, sometimes research can be focused within specific fields, um, especially a lot of nursing research tends to go into very uh, isolated uh, nursing journals that don't get wide, uh, as spread as wide as it really that research deserves to be. So the idea of promoting research and nursing research is another priority that's been identified uh, and increasing that overall nursing research visibility. So these are some things that leaders in the in nursing research fields are really promoting right now. All right, so those are just some things that we're thinking about overall with respect to nursing research. So. Now, there's really that other track, which is thinking about, OK, what about what do we do when there's actually a lot of research already there and we can actually pursue evidence based practice? So what is evidence based practice? Well, evidence based practice, um, here's the definition of just saying evidence based practice is defined as research based decision making processes uh, utilized to, to guide the delivery of holistic patient care by nurses. So again, the idea here being that we're taking evidence and using it to improve care for, for individuals, for communities, et cetera. Um, so how often is evidence-based practice used in, in healthcare? All the time, some of the time, none of the time? Um, think about it. What, what, is, what is our perspective on that? Um, you know, obviously evidence-based practice is used um, with some frequency. Um, but there's been a lot of research out there that has gone and looked at common procedures that are done in healthcare. And when they go back and actually chart, um, trying to understand where the decisions were led to, uh, how the decisions were formed to, to adopt those specific procedures, it turns out that sometimes as, oft, as frequently as half of the time, they can't really find any real evidence-based sources for why things are being done the way that they're done. OK, so the truth is, is that there's a real opportunity here to 
uh, look at some of the things that we're sort of taking for granted in healthcare and actually do research to show whether or not it actually does actually concretely improve health outcomes and improve the healthcare system as a whole. So why use evidence-based practice? Well, there's a lot of different reasons. So um, providing better care, generally speaking, is one of them, of course, that we've talked about uh, and solving problems that we're facing. So all of us face come up with different things that were challenges that we have to, to deal with, uh, improving the delivery of care. Um, uh, we can also uh, introduce new innovations. Uh, healthcare technologies are changing all the time, and we want to be up to date in terms of what we're, what we're doing. Another thing that we can do for evidence-based practice is a decreased variation. So uh, some a problem that often pops up in healthcare settings is that people are doing things in very different ways. And creating some consistency around that can actually help us to um, identify problems and actually create, uh, determine when we make changes, whether or not there's actually real benefits are coming from it. Um, Evidence-based practice can help with decision-making. Sometimes if you don't have a good process for pulling in good information, Decisions become really hard because we can't, we just can't, um, we can't decide based upon good reasoning, right? Uh, we also would want to use evidence-based practice to help guide our regulations and policies and guidelines, right? So there's a lot of different ways that we, that these strategies of gathering information, processing the, the information to synthesize it into recommendations can be trend, tremendously valuable in healthcare settings. Now, evidence-based practice and nursing research are related to another, but they're not the same. Evidence-based practice is really focused in on gathering information to improve healthcare, improve healthcare processes. Um, nursing research um, may have that as some long-term goal, but there's sometimes where nursing research is really focused more on generating new knowledge. Right. And sometimes it's not as focused in on sort of the pra practical situational benefits that you might get in evidence based practice processes, particularly for specific sites. Uh, nursing research tends to be more focused in on generalizability or providing information that anybody can use in any context. Evidence based practice is typically used by specific sites or specific um, groups to try and solve specific problems that we're facing in clinical contexts. Um, so that's sort of another way of sort of thinking about the distinction between research and evidence-based practice. So what is the process here? So um, if we face a problem, if we see a problem in clinical contexts, what we need to do first is convert those problems or those challenges into some clear question, all right? Um, then we want to go and seek evidence. So find information uh, from the literature, from experts, from protocols to actually answer those questions, right? Um, then we want to take that evidence and evaluate it to see how valid it is, how useful it is, what the quality of that information is. Um, and then we would pull it together to synthesize it, to make, um, you know, think about what evidence might lead to different types of procedures or protocols. Uh, and then we will want to actually apply the, those recommendations uh, in uh, creating new procedure or protocol. Now, this is an ongoing process because anything that we end up doing um, always leads to new questions. So we'll you have new questions and then we go back to converting information to create new questions. And this that's why this is all a cycle. So what are we talking about when we're talking about evidence and evidence-based practice? Well, you know, uh, one major element to the, this is research, and uh, you see that in the center there. Now, uh, research is a crucial element to this, and we'll be talking about that a lot uh, as we go through this course. Um, but there's a lot of other evidence that's really important for making evidence-based practice decisions. Um, you know, you can use basic science, you can think about what are patient preferences, we can also think about uh, in a specific site if we're making a decision for a unit, um, what is our, ju our judgment about what the right choices are? Sometimes uh, things that happen abstractly in research actually just don't work so well in actual specific contexts, right? So those, the, the clinical reasoning, uh, also clinical knowledge, sometimes experience, experts' opinion, 
um, general standards of practice is really important, clinical practice guidelines. These are all really important for guiding uh, our decisions, um, and these all constitute evidence. Now, that being said, there's sort of different levels of evidence. And I want to be clear here that um, when we're thinking about levels of evidence, uh, these levels of evidence, which we'll talk about more late, later, um, it's not necessarily saying that things at different levels in, in these categories are different quality, right? So you can have, um, you know, at the top you have meta-analyses or systematic reviews or practice guidelines that are based upon reviews of information. Like that would be your higher, highest level of evidence versus at the bottom expert opinion or, um, you know, uh, reports of committees or things like that that are a little less um, uh, systematic. Um, you know, these things, um, you can have quality at any of these levels, right? Um, what the difference between these are is that uh, as you go up these rankings of different types of study types, uh, really what it's saying is that at the higher levels, you have greater confidence that one factor relates to another factor, that if you do something, it's going to change something else, right? So that's not necessarily saying that... Um, it's higher quality, what it's saying is that it has generally uh, higher predictive value uh, in terms of making certain types of decisions, right? We'll talk a little bit more about these levels of evidence, but it's important for understanding that these exist because as we look at different types of papers and different types of evidence, we'll actually need to cate start categorizing this evidence to know what it means and what it doesn't mean. Now, one of the big things for evidence-based practice is trying to figure out how to narrow down all the information out, that's out there. There's just masses of, masses amounts of information about health in various different forms out there in terms of um, all the evidence that's out there in the world versus published uh, and, uh, evidence versus indexed evidence, which is the evidence that's, that is available in databases, for example. Then there's the evidence that you can actually find versus the evidence that you can access versus the evidence that you end up choosing to use, right? So a lot of what evidence-based practice is, is figuring out how to identify as much information as possible, but then quickly narrow it down to find the information that's actually gonna be useful for you. And that's a lot of what we'll be talking about in this course, uh, and one of the major skills of evidence-based practice. So what are some of the challenges of using research to actually improve evidence-based practice? Um, uh, and to increasingly have evidence-based practice be part of what we do in, in clinical contexts. Well, uh, experts who have looked at this have identified a few different challenges. Um, one is making sure that uh, nurses have the necessary skills and education to be able to do evident, uh, engage in evidence-based practice processes, right? Uh, and part of that is um, has led to um, national recommendations that classes like this exist, that we make sure that all nurses have um, training and research methodology and evidence-based practice processes, right? So there is a real push to um, uh, improve uh, that those types of educational skills, and that's an ongoing conversation, right? Another barrier that has been identified is sort of beliefs and attitudes around evidence-based practice and research. And um, this is research that has suggested that um, sometimes there is a disconnect between uh, nursing and nursing practice and the literature that exists out there. Um, and um, sometimes lack of confidence in one of one's ability to take that evidence and actually change practice and change procedures. So there's also a lot of inf uh, interest in helping nurses become more confident in uh, accessing research and, and uh, processing it to use it to guide their guide their practice. Um, the other major barrier that has been identified is um, support and resources for nurses who want to use research uh, to improve practice. Um, you know, there's ways in which you know uh, very nurses um, are very busy, right? Um, so they often don't have time to go out and look for papers. And uh, sometimes it's hard to actually access the databases or the other types of information that one would want to use to um, to gather information, right? 
Um, and this is really a systems problem where um, healthcare institutions are not giving nurses the time that they need to do this. Uh, they're not giving them the money and resources to do this. And uh, that's another problem that's really being addressed and you know needs to continue to be addressed in healthcare systems. So those are just some things that experts have identified as challenges that are sort of ongoing considerations for us to think about and opportunities for us to do better uh, as we think about improving evidence-based practice going forward. So overall, you know, the goal here is that evidence-based practice and these processes will lead to better patient outcomes, you know, help avoid things like unnecessary procedures and uh, reduce complications. There's all a huge range of things that, you know, will benefit overall healthcare. And this is true at multiple levels have been shown reliably across healthcare systems. Healthcare systems that have, that integrate and value evidence-based practice do better uh, across a wide range of different metrics. And it's really important that nurses feel empowered to be able to improve the healthcare system in their, in, that they're working in using research and using the best information available. So that's just a basic overview of nursing research and evidence-based practice. You know, we see the similarities in between them in terms of the way that you think about evidence, the way in which you engage with research and new information. But we also see that they're kind of different processes, uh, related but uh, distinct in terms of what they're trying to do and how they approach it. So uh, thank you very much for listening, and we'll certainly be talking about this a lot more as we go forward. So take care, everyone, and be well.